I am the director of cardiac electrophysiology in Lugano, Switzerland, and very happy to be here today with you. Well, there has been a large number of trials presented at this uh, AF Symposium 2024, uh, all really uh, interesting and uh, certainly um, clinically relevant. Probably uh, do two or three that uh, really um, were important in my uh, clinical practice, and specifically in the field of atrial fibrillation ablation, is uh, the one presented by Dr. Natale. And uh, the, the study was related to the evaluation of um, hemoglobinuria in patients undergoing PFA ablation, so pulse field ablation. So what they found is uh, that the relatively uh, good number of uh, patients, they have developed hemoglobinuria after PFA. The interesting part of the study was that they looked at patients who have been they in a sort of historical control where they observed the problem. And then another group where they start to do act proactively to try to reduce or minimize the issue of hemoglobinuria. The reason why hemoglobinuria happened in patients undergoing pulse field ablation is most likely related to the high field uh, passing through erythrocyte, so where you create really hemolysis. And so because of that, of course, you have uh, then later um, uh, an hemoglobinuria. By the way, the finding of Dr. Natale were pretty consistent with another very recent manuscript published in P. Europace reporting exactly the same issue in a relatively large number of patients. So the idea overall is that hemolysis really may exist and this may be related to the fact that you may have an insufficient contact between the uh, device, the ablation uh, uh, device with the wall, so you're creating sort of a film in between, but also is probably related to the number or certainly related to the number of applications. So indeed there was a correlation between the number of applications with the probability to have hemolysis and hemoglobinuria. So overall, this indicates to me that, uh, and this is also the summary of Dr. Natale was, of course you need to hydrate the patients probably during and after the uh, uh, procedures in a way that you can really reduce the uh, uh, um, renal or the kidney uh, uh, damage related to the hemoglobinuria. I think that is very relevant uh, for our field because you know, PFA is a novel technology. Uh, so this is something new to all of us, not reported before. So but these two manuscripts, one in J, uh, JSCCP and the other one in EP Europase, confirm that the, uh, there is a, a potential issue, but this is solvable uh, uh, complication, is a manageable complication. So the other study I was also quite uh, interested in is the study presented by Dr. Musa Mansour at MGH. Um, so he showed um, data, uh, it is a, a, a prospective uh, analysis um, or secondary analysis of a large trial which has been presented um, in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, and the trial was designed in a way that there is um, uh, uh, was a comparison between PFA and thermal ablation, which could be either the cryo or regular point-by-point uh, -point radiofrequency. So in that study, the idea was let us look at the level of pulmonary vein stenosis, which might be a relevant uh, uh, issue in long term. So far there has been very, very little attention or there's been very, very little data uh, or if any data on, uh, on the potential damage that PFA could have on pulmonary vein isolation, uh, on pulmonary vein stenosis. And, uh, and of course what the other, say more conventional technique can do. So the study, it was interesting because it showed quite clearly 
that PFA is by far the safest uh, uh, methodology or technique in order to avoid pulmonary vein stenosis. In contrast, cryo and radiofrequency ablation in particular had a significant reduction or had a major reduction in the diameter of certain veins, in particular of left inferior pulmonary vein. So this is, I think, is a very strong signal that despite you know, the fact that uh, the efficacy of these three technologies and the, uh, the uh, um, long-term, uh, say, one year, uh, one year and a half uh, outcome of these, techno uh, of these three technology as far as AF um, uh, 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 successful concern, it is pretty similar, but the safety of the PFA is significantly higher and much better. So the third study um, is um, related to um, the uh, uh, best abstract award presented by uh, Dr. Uh, Luigi Di Biase at Montefiore Hospital. And the um, uh, study uh, was conducted in, uh, in a preclinical setting. So it was um, a catheter which has a special sensor uh, and designed to have a sensor with PFA delivery and essentially they put the sensor in or the catheter in the ventricle and they looked at the level of energy as well as the level of uh, pressure on the wall in order to understand which is the best combination to produce large region or best region in particular transmural lesion with the uh, contact or with the best contact. So, um, and indeed it looks like that contact sense of force with the combination of a certain energy is particularly helpful in, uh, in predicting the depth of a lesion. So essentially the transmurality. And I think these, although it's now only in preclinical, but if we translate this data into the clinical uh, field, that might really be a major change in the way that we are using and controlling PFA.